Foot Doc here with another video for you on all things foot and ankle. Today I'm going to talk about the posterior tibial tendon. Now this tendon, which is not as well known as the Achilles tendon, is nonetheless just as important. The posterior tibial tendon is a very strong tendon that sits on the side of the foot uh, coming from a muscle structure in the back of the leg. This muscle, or this tendon rather, from the muscle action basically resists the foot's um, likelihood of flattening and stretching out and rolling outwards. This particular tendon, along with the muscle attached to it, helps to roll the foot inward, which is a very important uh, motion during the walking cycle. Uh, the posterior tibial tendon essentially begins uh, as a muscle back further back in the leg. And if you look at this foot model, you can see this is where the big toe is. So on the same side of your foot as the big toe, a little bit further back, this posterior tibial tendon runs down along underneath the ankle bone and then attaches to a bone called the navicular, which basically sits right here. Uh, in, in helping the foot to function better, when this muscle contracts, it basically causes the foot to roll inward and that helps to resist the tendency of the foot to roll completely outward when you're bearing full weight on your foot and it also uh, resists the activity of another muscle on the other side of the foot which forces that foot outward as well. So both of these muscles work in conjunction with each other in order to make the foot function properly. Now there's a problem that often develops with this posterior tibial tendon and that it can get easily inflamed as well as damaged and irritated. Now we typically tend to see this in people who have flat feet, whose feet automatically roll outward uh, as a result of their foot structure which causes a lot of stress and strain to this tendon in the first place and the tendon has to work harder to be able to stabilize the foot. However, we can also see this condition in people who have normal foot types who just happen to injure their, uh, their tendon during uh, an athletic activity or while hiking or walking on an uneven surface that caused their foot to, to roll back and forth a lot such as walking on gravel or, or grass or sometimes even just walking on the beach on the unsteady surface of deep sand. When this tendon becomes inflamed and irritated it will start to hurt and the area can become swollen. If the problems that started this inflammation in the first place are allowed to continue, unfortunately this tendon can begin to degrade. And as this tendon, tendon begins to degrade, the foot in and of itself will actually begin to flatten more. This is the primary cause of why people develop flat feet later on in life is because of destructive changes to this particular tendon. Now, treating this particular tendon when it becomes inflamed, another condition also called tendonitis, treating this particular tendon is something that needs to be done early on to prevent some of these later changes because as the foot flattens out and this tendon starts to destroy itself more, other changes will occur to the bone structure at the back of the foot which uh, likely can lead to a massive amount of degeneration not only of the tendon but also of all the joints in the back of the foot. And this can lead to a pretty serious uh, painful condition. So early treatment is uh, very important when it starts to become inflamed and that treatment basically consists of resting it, supporting it with a brace, uh, also icing it and taking anti-inflammatory medications. Uh, sometimes that's not enough and you have to use more substantial braces or even involve a physical therapist to try to help to uh, stimulate the tendon into healing once it's been stabilized from the excessive activity that was causing the tendonitis in the first place. As this condition begins to progress, if it's untreated, it can develop into a condition called posterior tibial tendon dysfunction, which is basically a three-stage uh, disease process that gradually uh, catalogs the destruction of this particular tendon and the associated uh, bone structures next to it. That particular condition needs a much more substantial level of um, of treatment and that could include such basic things as starting off with a prescription orthotic to stabilize the, uh, the tendon itself all the way up to using very uh, specified uh, braces that are actually made of a mold of the foot uh, also called ankle foot orthosis which cast and immobilize and stabilize the, the foot and the ankle structure while still allowing a person to be functional. Uh, if none of these do the trick and that continue condition continues to become destructive, then surgery is necessary in order to stabilize uh, the tendon, try to get it to heal, and unfortunately in more advanced cases you actually have to address the problem with the bone uh, destruction and the joint destruction itself. 
So surgical intervention, at least early on, uh, consists of trying to get the tendon to stimulate, to, uh, to stimulate healing uh, by either uh, using specialized uh, radio frequency devices that will cause a stimulation of, of the healing tissue uh, or by other types of surgical measures which will uh, allow the, the, the tissue to begin to heal. And also what's usually necessary is um, moving the tendon downward a little bit to try to increase its ability to pull on the foot itself and that can help it to decrease the strain associated with uh, normal foot function on this tendon. Uh, sometimes on that navicular bone there's either a large um, bone that's to the side of it or there's actually a separate bone that might sit within where the tendon uh, attaches to the bone itself and oftentimes that can also be a source of irritation to the tendon and when surgery is performed um, either that enlargement of the bone or that extra bone is also removed. Now if it gets to a more advanced stage and simply addressing the tendon isn't going to help because the foot has flattened out severely at that point, then surgery is necessary to basically fuse the joints together so that there isn't this continued process of joint destruction and flattening. And that involves fusing several joints in the back of the foot um, below the ankle uh, that will keep the foot locked and stabilized into a, a good position so that the destruction doesn't continue. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on uh, this topic. And uh, if you're interested in more videos on all things foot and ankle, uh, look either at this site or others. And you may also check out my website at www.inpodiatrygroup.com. Thank you.